It's Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo. I'm for Labby Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Waike in the building. Yo, 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 yo. Waike is wearing two different shoes. I'm no, not. She oh, you decided. You finally decided. Oh. No, I'm, I'm going to wear the second pair. At 10 o'clock. So everyone will help me. <laughs> because you go have, online and vote. She couldn't figure out which pair of shoes she should wear. So you finally chose the brighter one. The orange one. The orange you one. Okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe later, you know. So I didn't wait. I'll change the other one. Take a picture and post it online. Oh. It will help me vote. <laughs> How are you doing? How was celebration? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic outing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everybody who supported all our sponsors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They got the government. They got the government. I must. Ah. Especially the, the, the new commissioner. I mean, uh -uh, sorry, he's, he's our person. He's anti He's anti yeah, she, she actually came. Yeah. She actually came. She stayed. She watched the show. She had an interview. It was so nice. Ifara yeah. Bale, yeah. yeah. She, she's uh -huh, definitely... and the minister of uh, commissioner of information. Both of them came. Yeah, oh, yeah they're good amazing. people. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm they, so happy. They support collaboration, and I think they, they understand the reason the behind it. You yeah. Know? And it, it was yeah. nice. It was nice. It was, it was a breath um, of fresh air. We saw it. My brother and his kids came. I know you also hosted yes, them. Yes, I, I met your my brother, your, kids. his kids. I yes, met his yes, kids for yes. the first time. Yes, you know, so, so much fun. They kept going uh, on and on about it. Oh, oh really? They come <laughs> back, but they really enjoyed the experience. I, I hope you gave him his t-shirts. Yes, yeah, of course, he picked ah, it up. <laughs> How are you doing, Topsy? I'm very good. Um, so, yesterday... Yeah, yeah, your face looks clear. Yesterday, I didn't understand the hair. I kept trying yeah. to look out today. I think you... You, you, yeah. I, somehow, somehow, I was still trying to figure it out. Because naturally, I love to carry my natural hair, but I cannot commit to. Are you saying this because I like to try this hair, shall I? I think yeah. I like your banter. You borrow me. Yeah. Just you could, patronizing you. Uh, you could just. I want to try uh, it. Move on to your banter. You see you. that I don't even compare to you. Exactly. I just don't look, comment. I love you right back. Like I love you. How are you doing, Tag? No, why are you people, people overtaking my <laughs> banter? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I was going to talk about the fact that sometimes we let see finish keep us from opportunities. You know, um, we have friends that probably can advise us on something, and I feel like I cannot go and meet that friend to come and ad to advise me or that, those kind of things. In recent times, my husband stumbled on one contract that I signed with an investor, and when he saw the breakdown, and he said, please, I, I'm going to invest this amount in your in Rep360. You will pay me this amount, <laughs> and you will give me this contract. I just laughed. When I, when I now said it, I had not got that um, on my on social media yesterday. A lot of people gave me feedback of the fact that people don't feel comfortable. They feel you shouldn't mix um, relationship with money, that it might mm. distort that relationship. But I think that that relationship must have been fundamentally yeah. faulty if yeah. money is going to now distort the relationship. Mat and maturity also works. Mm. When, 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 when you've lived a certain level in life, you realize you're now more objective you see things differently mm. so good well done fantastic hello doing i'm doing babe great. <laughs> this is your hair i'm still back everybody's hair i want to take this one i want to take this one i want to take everything <laughs> but this is great now i love it so um i've not been able to take some new clients who wanted me to coach them because i've been busy oh yeah oh, you've yeah. Been on i like to give my all when mm. i'm doing anything that i do and you guys know i do a lot so <laughs> everyone that i do i have to come in authentic and represent so i had to decline i said give me till if you can if the issue can wait give me till january by then i would have sorted out all of my businesses you know i'll now have my physical office so if you want it physically you want it again spiritually <laughs> you want it online i'll be ready for you but um it was really sad to let those two clients go because um their issue seemed really pressing and they wanted to talk to me about it but i can't do that right now i'm on set i'm yeah. working towards my business street fairs are happening and all that okay. so let me use this year to cool down january we start again <laughs> nice okay let's go how you quick doing? break i'm you fine tell you, us don't, how you, you don't finish the time now Sorry, Let's go on a break. <laughs> we return. We'll look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Supreme Court grills articles lawyers over the Chicago State University documents. Ondo Assembly pushes ahead with Ayedatiwa's impeachment. <clears throat> Senate uncovers duplications in East-West Road contracts. Forex crisis, federal government inject to inject $10 billion in weeks. The victory in the $11 billion P and ID's UK case excites presidents and EFCC. Coast clear for Ododo as Supreme Court dismisses Adeyemi's appeal. And federal government confirms January's start of student loan scheme. 
Okay, which story are we starting with in um, the nation? Okay, I can start with the student loan scheme. Okay. Um, so the implementation of the student loan scheme will commence in January next year. Uh, this was according to President Bola Metinubu, and he said this yesterday. I also said the consumer credit scheme will take off in 2024 as part of government's efforts to stimulate economic growth. Um, you know, he said this at the 29th Nigeria Economic Summit. Um, let me get it. Summit Group conference in Abuja and 37th and 38th convocation ceremonies at the University of Illori in Kwara State. So he said um, government-owned tertiary institutions will no longer go on strike and he was assuring Nigerians who are affected by the short-term impact of the reforms that very soon will begin to enjoy the benefits of all of these reforms that are being done. Then for the uh, credit scheme that he talked about, he said he, he's decided that it will come into effect as soon as possible, that he has taxed his team and colleagues to build a program and develop it so that uh, we, we cannot keep talking about anti-corruption and then people, workers are not able to be able to buy homes or buy their cars. You, they will need about three million to five million uh, to purchase all of these things. But if they have this credit uh, system, they will be able to buy it and you know just uh, eases them into life. And then we can now start dealing with corruption because when they are not able to afford some of these things, that's what causes uh, corruption. And then for the student loan, it says that um, it will help um, students pay for education and the interests are going to be very, very low so that students who are not able to uh, ordinarily attend school yeah. will be able to tap into this program yeah. and get that education. Okay, let me take the major headlines. So yesterday, we just update from the um, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court had reserved judgment in the appeal uh, of um, Atiku and um, the Labour Party. Um, um, the Supreme Court dismissed the appeal by the Allied People's Movement that, that theirs was dismissed, but they decided to reserve judgment on from the PDP and the LP. <laughs> According to the lawyer to Article specifically, they were, um, they were asking for um, a leave to present fresh evidence based on the deposition that was held in Chicago, um, by, in Chicago and by, um, it was hosted by Atiku's lawyer um, in Atiku's lawyer's office um, concerning the documents provided by the Chicago State University. Um, and the, the lawyer to Article specifically was added that the Supreme Court was the custodian of the constitution, constitution and should admit the documents in view of the exceptional circumstances that have risen, that um, the respondent's objection was just technical. And because they are Supreme Court, it should sidestep technicalities and do substantial justice in this matter. However, the justice, that's Justice John Okoro, um, who, was head, who actually heads the Court of Appeal Seven Man Panel, asked Uche whether he expected the court to um, and be guided by the Constitution or to act arbitrarily. Also, um, they're saying that another member of the panel sought to know um, the nature of how the documents was uh, obtained. According to the judge, they're saying that the fact that even had a meeting in Atiku's office in the U.S., where uh, we don't even know the person, the person who was the, the stenographer or whoever that was taking notes, we don't know if it's authorized to even um, to, to document the meeting. However, Dr. Uche, the counsel to Mr. Atiku, said that it doesn't really matter that things are done differently in the U.S. As long as Atiku's lawyer, uh, Tinumbu's lawyers, and the other lawyers were present, there was no issue with this. Either way, both, um, um, both parties' petitions have been reserved, and we'll wait for the Supreme Court to make an announcement. But we'll see what happens in the next few days. Well, Nigerians are waiting so that we can put this matter I, to response. I think we said by November 6th, everything should November be November 6th, hopefully. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, so some irregularities in the, inclu including duplications in the awards of, I'm taking the um, Chenit panel in charge of the East West Road contracts. So some irregular irregularities, including duplications in the award of contracts have been uncovered by the Senate Ad Hoc Committee mm -hmm. on fact finding on the East West Road project. <laughs> they said that, the committee says that um, the, the awards have been uh, duplicated and the worst part is that the there have been compromises on the road regarding the engineering and construction they said uh, they are they are there on ground they're going to do a fact-finding mission and they're going to carry whoever is they're going to indict whoever is responsible mm. for this, these roads and that this road has de defied four administrations. <laughs> That's the east-west road. Uh, the east-west road, it says. 
from President Thomas Onjo to late Musa Yaradua to Dr. Goodluck Jonathan it should be hopeful. and Mohamed Buhari. It should be hopeful. So they, also they, these 10 them. Senates, <laughs> they are going to uncover this. <laughs> okay, any other story? Yes, point? I was going to take the story of um, another uh, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has ruled concerning the case of Senator Smart Adeyemi against um, the... Usman Ododo is there's going to be a governorship election in Kogi State by November 11th, and in gearing up to that, um, the Senator Smart Adeyemi, who was a senator in the Ninth Assembly, had petitioned the court. He had gone to um, um, the High Court and the Appeal Court, and now at the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court ruled against this judgment that it lacked merit, saying that the, it, it didn't bring in any evidence that challenged the concurrent findings of both the High Court and the Appeal Court. Mentioned that um, the um, two issues he raised by in the appeal was vexatious and non triable Then he went, the judge went on to take his time, Justice E.A. Agbem, to deliver a note that you cannot take a case to court and then go on TV and say on television that the, if the court is a court of justice, the appeal should go in your favor. Mm -hmm. That if you have already... Um, gotten your lawyer, you have filed your case, go and rest, not go on TV yeah. to be talking about a case just, yeah. that is still being... And, um, and it's a trend now. Nigerians feel that because even, even the, in this protester uh, tribunal, everybody goes, once you first of all file the case, you now go on TV and start doing press briefing, mm -hmm. press yeah. conference. But it's, 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 it's illegal. Yeah. It's even illegal. You're not it's wrong. To, you cannot discuss a so case that is back. in court. Yeah. On yes. TV or anywhere. Mm -hmm. I know that because they, my father was in court hundreds yes. of times. Even though we, we, we discussed that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the punch. Try, uh, Tinubu's certificate is just lack of respect for our judicial system, yeah. period. Prove all alleged forgery beyond reasonable doubt, says Supreme Court to article. On your dam, flood, sacks, Ogun communities, governors declares emergency. Slain Nigerian students did come probes murder, nans demand justice. FGIHS plan 1 billion Naira tech talents community. UK court dismisses 11 billion dollar P and ID suit. Nigeria demands damages. FG plans 10 billion dollars to stabilize Naira eyes and NPCL for Forex. And FEC okays 3.4 billion Naira World Bank loan for power and others. Okay. Let's so yes. go ahead. So Just some residents, uh, traders, and other business ventures in the Lagos Ibado Expressway have been sent packing by water surge. Uh, because of the release of the excess water from the Oyan River Dam. And um, according to the correspondent for Punch, she said they saw that uh, yesterday the water almost leveled up along the bridge at the highway. Uh, residents who live in the estates like Isheri, Riverview, and other residential surroundings, uh, Wariwa to the Opik area, were also uh, affected. <coughs> and it says the dam, which is managed by the Ogun, Oshun River Basin Development Authority, located at Abiyokuta, not local government area of the state, releases water every yeah. uh, year. And, you know, they released it this month and it's really flooded. And they had to call the attention of the uh, governor, Dabo Abiodu of um, Ogun State. And he says he has declared that area an emergency area. He's going to be working with the federal government to see how they can build uh, drainages there to ensure that people have a free flow yeah. of... Um, I'm uh, very surprised, though. You know, I told you that governor came to our streets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, as did he come to our streets, he doesn't think we are, we need a, any intervention. Yeah, they are the 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 going to investigate what happens to the money that we paid. For we want to goods. believe that it's in you the world. Yeah. Don't worry, it's, it's in the world. It's going to happen, YK. It's going to break. It's the same man. It's not magic. This is, not, this is a <laughs> process now. Right amen, back. amen. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're still reviewing Punch. Let's move on. Uh, yes, have a story? Um, I have a story. The um, following up on the Israeli, um, Hamas. Uh, yeah, mass. There was a raid that took place, <coughs> and in that raid overnight, they were able to um, arrest hundreds. One twenty militants were, told, were said to be have been arrested along the West Bank um, area. There were also um, raids around the 
um, refugee camp within the West Bank area, and they said that they arrested 120 militants. Um, in the place of the arrests, about two people got killed, but the the you said the humanitarian services need to be paused. To, uh, they, they need to pause the war for humanitarian services to take place within the area, so that there will be distribution of need needful um, items to the population of Gaza as they're trying to move um, out of their houses for into safer um, areas. And Norway also supports the fact that there should be war um, crime probe on what has happened within Gaza between Israel and Hamas. Right. But everybody in the world is praying for peace <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, let me take this call, um, this <laughs> um, article Story. from the uh, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Wali Adun, where he was saying that FEC has approved the application for $3.4 billion loan to finance five items. These are the power sector, renewable energy, state's resource mobilization program, Adolescents Girls Initiative for Learning, Empowerment, and Women's Empowerment Project. So um, according to the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Waleidun, specifically said that um, the, the federal government will proceed to receive this money uh, with zero interest plan and learn loan and it will be payable within 40 years. And um, of course, they also have a 10-year moratorium. That means that they don't start paying until after 10 years. So he, this, this will go into those five important projects. Uh, I'm pretty excited for the Minister of Women Affairs also, because I know this is no humanitarian, the disaster development and uh, humanitarian services. That's yeah. Dr. Beta Edu. Beta Edu. She needs some resources and financing. So this will help her. And also to the green economy. I know that also someone like Mariam here, she's really interested in... Uh, oh. Renewable energy, mm -hmm. so the, we need to invest in these things, and I'm happy. Power sector is one of the, but again, is the loan. Our our current loan has hit yeah. about uh, is in the trillions of nairas. But oh, every so loan, really if it is yeah. actually put into a productive, yeah, if something that will produce, yeah. it's not a problem. Yes. I wanted to take the story of the poor Nigerian student, Inkem. He just know his name as Inkem, who was murdered in um, the Philippines. So the Nigerian students yes, have. I heard that story. Yeah, they've mm -hmm. called out to. Um, Nigerians, the commission, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission to investigate. They too have said they're going to investigate. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently, according to an ex-user, Michael, Michael Ujuola, he tweeted that the deceased hands were tied and his mouth covered and he was beaten to death by oh. some Chinese. Yeah, we oh. did that story yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, we did. And but, um, so they're calling to investigate and... Uh, all right, you tell that story in punch. We're done with punch. Okay, let's move on now to Daily Sun. Supreme Court prepares for poll judgment day. FEC approves setting up of poverty elevation trust fund. Federal government will achieve one trillion dollar economy target in 2026 and four trillion in 2035. System autonomy parliamentary workers to shut national and state assemblies. Mba woos investors with juicy opportunities, ease of doing business policy. Fuel scarcity may worsen as 86 firms dump petrol import permit over forex crisis. And president applauds as Nigeria wins the 11 billion P and ID case. Okay, which case, which story? Uh, so they said about 86 oil trading companies may have dumped their various permits to import uh, premium motor spirits, uh, popularly known as petrol, over the country's worsening foreign exchange crisis. And um, said the development may worsen the recent fuel shortages leading to queues across the country, especially in Lagos and Abuja. Now, Authority Chief Executive Nigeria Midstream Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, Mr. Farouk Ahmed, was the one who disclosed this uh, while he was giving his keynote uh, speech at All Trading Logistics Africa Week 2023, which started in Lagos yesterday with the theme Energy Synergy and New Beginnings. So he says out of 94 wholesale suppliers that were issued permits to import PMS into the country. Only eight suppliers delivered eight cargoes of PMS, which totaled 250,000 empty within the period of June uh, to September 2023. And the low import performances was as a result of the challenges of Forex, you know, which is constraining the oil marketing company's ability to get the product. And it says they are hopeful that efforts being taken by the government to improve the stability and you know to harmonize the forex market as well would ease up things in time so we're still waiting to see how that happens and they are hoping also on the dangote refinery saying that very soon once they start you know producing and selling we may not have issues with 
uh, petroleum. I'm very concerned about the people who have gotten licenses. You know, we kept praying that they should get licenses so that it's not just NMPC that yes, imports. Now yeah. they have license, they don't have money to carry out the business. Yeah, no, forex. So it still goes back to only NMPC basically yeah. importing uh, fuel. Yeah. They have yeah. an advantage because they get forex. <laughs> so it's okay, unfair. so the governor of Enugu State, Dr. Peter Mba, has urged Indo Indonesian businesses and investors to take advantage of the opportunities within Enugu State, saying that it should definitely secure uh, ample return on investments. According to him, there are key areas for investment opportunities, some of which are agriculture, mineral resources, logistics, aviation, tourism, real estate, mineral resources, and ICT, amongst many others. So he's trying to woo investors into his state, which is a great idea, um, and he's trying to work with the Indonesian government on that. Okay. So I want to take the story about Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN. They yesterday have reiterated their intention to embark on a nationwide strike. They said they are going to shut down the National Assembly and all state assemblies. They had sent the letter, they had informed the DSS, they had informed um, the Nigerian Governors Forum that they want the autonomy. The autonomy had been signed into law and that the provision hasn't been complied with by most states in Nigeria. So they gave this 21-day ultimatum that they were going to go on strike. They also extended it by one week, hoping that the one week extension will give governors time to implement the um, local government autonomy, and that hasn't worked. So they've said that um, based on this, they are going to be going on strike. They are going to not just go on strike, they would shut down the National Assembly and all state assembly and ask that there's an implementation of the law which gives local government autonomy. This was released by Aguegu Ugochi Happiness, who is the person acting Secretary General. And he said since the governors have failed, they would get to the, they would take to the streets. Okay, moving on now to Vanguard, presidential tussle, article CSU, evidence not admissible, says Tinumbu. Subsidy removal, exchange rate in unification, we have achieved desired objectives, says Tinumbu. Um, Nigeria wins $11 billion um, dollar P and ID case. FEC approves $5 billion dollar annual humanitarian poverty alleviation trust fund. Autonomy states assembly staff begin nationwide strike. Attack on Tinumbu wiki, northern elders disown Gumi. Okay, let me take the, um, the $5 billion. Um, so it was said that the FEC meeting yesterday approved the establishment of the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund as part of the administration's efforts to cushion um, the economic hardship on poor Nigerians. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Beta Edu, disclosed this while briefing State House correspondent at the end of the meeting. She said that the fund was to be up to about $5 billion. According to her, there will be a government bo governing board that will be supervising the implementation and disbursement of these funds. It will involve the Minister of Finance and other ministers and who are relevant with the process. She said this is victory for the poor and indeed will bring help and succor to many um, Nigerians across the nation. Yeah, so I wanted to take the Northern Elders disowning Gumi. Um, Gumi. They, he, he had accused um, the President and uh, Wiki and on yeah. colla collaborating with uh, uh, Israel. And they, they have said that they are not involved. They've washed their hands off him. They said it, uh, they are, it's uh, dis divisive and inciting. They are not part of it, and they've, they've condemned it. They said there's nothing, uh, why are they, uh, is he? Hitting up the politics. Yeah. Okay. News from Undo states is... Um, we have to run, unfortunately, Top. I can't take that story. Uh, uh, really? That's all we can take. It's a very ready. simple story. Oh, yeah, go ahead. To start. Uh, the sure, the sure. Undo Assembly had already ag agreed with the uh, APC um, state... Fed, the chairman of the party, that they were not going to pursue the case of impeachment to the deputy governor. And now they are going ahead to create a panel and they are pushing for the impeachment of Aida Tiwa. They've asked the CJ of the state to constitute a panel to... Um, investigate the allegations. Mm -hmm. There are supporters and people that are not in support of this, but we're hoping to see peace and undo citizens put ahead of politics. Okay, ah. that is all we can take oh, on front page review. review. Just stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
thanks for staying with us. So the Lagos State Government recently sealed some certain sections of the popular Alaba International Market and the Boston Trade Fair Market due to reported sanitation concerns. In the past few weeks, we've also witnessed many similar actions from the state government, even demolition of buildings. Now the question is, what exactly is happening? Are certain people being witch hunted or what exactly is going on here? Join us on the show now is the Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources um, in the state, Mr. Tokumbo Wahab. Well, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me, Moriah. I said like, I was calling you the chief clamper because you were clamping everywhere. We just feeling, feeling everything, sealing, and <laughs> you know. Let me let's start with let's, then before we go to trade fair, and even the let's talk about the past few weeks. The first time we, we were shocked was our close by our Nkule here, mm -hmm. Shangisha. The people said you've cleared out that entire Shangisha. <laughs> we thought that was it, though. Then we now heard you went to Lekki. Mm. We started shutting down everything. And then we saw you drones. We saw pictures. I said, what is going on? So my question to you, sir, what is going on in your village? <laughs> Kilo Kilo Shele Shele gong gong. Gong. <laughs> yes, OK, thank you. <clears throat> you see, there is a law, a 2017 law, Lagos State um, Environmental Management Law. And that law stipulates how we should relate with our environment. Mm. The environment is the master of man, not the other way around. However, for whatever reasons, people are choosing to be very brazen in their attitude towards the environment. Mm. I'll start with the street trading. There is nowhere in the world where you go and be walking on the streets. It's a danger to you and to everybody. So it was Something we had to do to set the tone, and we served them the requisite notices. Please leave this place and let us have a proper, well sanit sanitized environment. We did that, and there was the hue and cry, and we said we won't stop because of that. This was um, on our way to really, if I'm right, on a Sunday. That's Eric Moore. On getting, uh, we, we passed him by, and we said, What is this? This is in the middle of Suruleri. Mm. And um, we asked Loma, we saw everybody, we said, what is happening here? This has been here for a while. Clear it out. Once you clear it out, it will be easier for us to take ownership of it, plant the, um, the greens, and then hand it over to the bins around that, around that corridor, especially Indomie and others, and they've taken it up. Mm. If you go there now, it's a different kettle of fish. Mm. Mm? Now, wow. from this point down to Orile, mm. you notice if you pass by that axis, you notice there is a total sanity from Orile to Ojo, and we're turning back now, mm. pushing back to tell them that we have to clean back our environment. It's not something that we joyfully want to do, but when people are very brazen in their wrong attitude, and they are not ready to even think twice, so for us, it's about enforcing the law. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is at, um, this should be lucky. Look, let me get a few more questions for you. Go ahead, yeah, I was going to, you know, while I commend you to, and, and I, I like that you want to sanitize legal state, I need to ask, because I was listening to the radio today, and many of the Igbos feel that you're going to Alaba and you're going to trade fair. If they are, you are targeting them. I'm not saying that you are targeting them, and this is their feeling. And we want an inclusive, all inclusive government. We want, I, I want you to convince them that you are not targeting them. And convince me too. Yeah. Okay, let me pause you for a second because I have to go on a break for you to answer that question. The, the mic is having issues. Stay with us. Okay. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing here with Mr. Tokumba Wahaba, um, Commissioner for Environment. You're going to ask a question questions concerning the possibility of targeting, uh, allegation of targeting the Igbos. Okay, um, Yeni, nothing of such. Mm. We started with um, the market at Abuli Egba, Ileipo, to be specific, and we went to Igbo. The biggest market at Ajegule, Alaya Biagba, was short. Igbo was short. 
Ileko, but I believe that was short. The second of Tejo show, we did the same. And we came to my 12 last, last week. That is the most delicate of all the markets, perishable goods, foodstuffs. But we won't say because we scared we cherry pick enforcement. This was at Alaya Biagba. And they complied. Ladipo was shot for about two weeks. Mm. The state of Ladipo was something we're not proud of. And when they complied, we opened Ladipo. Now, for you to know that there's nothing like cherry picking for me and the government. On what basis will I say I want to shut one and leave the other? Are those traders at Alaba or Trade Fair, are they super traders? Are they super than those at Oyibo or Alaya Biagba? No, it's the law. Let us see the law and not let them do this dog whistle about ethnic slant. It's none of my business. I have friends and I'll tell them, if you're doing the right thing, you have no cause to be afraid of the law. Mm. If today they comply, you'll be shocked. It will open the same day. Mm. For a lot of people, the moment they complied, we told them, on seal. In fact, for a lot of people, they have not even met the safety commission full requirements. But we said, because it's a trading concern, it's a growing concern, give them 30 days window to meet up. Mm. And we opened. So if they think or they believe they can use ethnicity to blackmail us, it won't work. Okay. I don't see ethnicity, I don't see color, I don't see creed. All right, I see I'll, the law. I'll, I'll, I'll love yeah. for you to um, properly break down the concerns that made you shut down, uh, that has made you shut down these markets because it's easy to put coloration where there is no um, facts on the reasons behind it. What were the concerns? What were the risks associated? What are you trying to prevent going forward? Very poor sanitary conditions. Very poor. The pictures, they saw the pictures themselves. Um, some of their highly placed of persons called and we sent them the pictures. And in fairness to them, they apologized. And the, the, the story was, can you now please open it for us? No, we can't open it for your sake. If we do that, it's as good as let us open the, all the other markets. Mm. We can't cherry pick. The moment you start cherry picking enforcement because of individuals, mm. then you've lost the battle. Yeah. yeah, because some people are saying, okay, why didn't you just shut some people and that the people that are complying or the people that have paid and leave the ones... Yeah, 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 it's not even about the payment for me. It's not about the sanction for me. If you put the monetary conditions first, then you've lost the battle also. Mm. It's about reorientating ourselves on how to it's live in yeah. this environment. Yeah. Look, if there's a cholera outbreak today, none of us will be safe. Mm -hmm. mm. And then the health sector will be overwhelmed. Mm. Look at that terrible domino effect on the health sector to start with. Mm. So, for, look, I had gone around the state and I am totally unhappy with the state of things. Yeah. And I believe if we don't arrest it now, we are moving towards Golgotha. We are moving towards hell. Okay. And we can't afford Lagos to be hell. Okay. It's okay. home to every one of us. Right. It's welcoming for everybody. Yeah. But live within the confines. How, how do people even feel waking up in the morning trying to trade in a very, very filthy environment? Mm. They've gotten used to it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but you can't get used to bad behavior. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you the plans for sustainability. Uh, because I know that this debt took years mm. to pile to that level. And some of the concerns was uh, they didn't have the proper place to put them. They didn't have a, the proper, the, the companies that were in charge yeah, of, yeah. you know, taking these refuses were not forthcoming. So what's, what's the plan now that the place has been cleared or is being cleared at the moment when they resume? What's that plan that would take them? So that every week, every quarter, every month, there's this you know, progress report on what is going on to keep that place. Now, in fairness, I will say to you, the government and government officials also dropped the ball at some point. If you have a PSP allocated to an area and it's not being paid, it's a business person, he won't go there and work. Mm. Mm. However, the law also provides for how to go about it. Let him make a complaint, serve a notice, but still clear the debt, and then he will come to court. There are mobile courts for these purposes, mm. Mm. according to the law. So do the job first. Do the job. Yeah, and you get paid. They won't pay you interest. All your delays. Who paid the interest? The person or the, the government? Person. The person. The person defaulted. The court to make sure they do Now, that. also, Loma is being reorganized, threatened to intervene in certain areas too. 
Normally, it's supposed to be a regulator. Okay. But now we, have, we, we, we must seem to go with the hybrid option. Threaten Loma in a way that Loma can intervene in a very straight way without sending the wrong signal. Now, there are areas also we need to go back with the green orientation. That's where last pack comes in. Between Orile, Alabarago, mile two, mile 12, mm -hmm. no, mile two, we've taken over some spaces okay. and they've come up with a design. Make a mini pack, put it to use. Once it's put, put it to use, you'll be shocked people will not come back there and defecate those areas. Mm. But most importantly, citizens must take ownership. Mm -hmm. They must see it as theirs. This brazen attitude of, we can do it, nothing is going to happen, must stop someday. Right. Mm. Okay. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guests with us. Um, in the first part, you, you re referenced the law quite a bit. And I wanted to know, what is government doing? Because we keep saying there's a law, but I just don't know the law. Um, is there some kind of a campaign to let Nigerians know what the laws are? Because people just like, in Nigeria, you can throw the trash out the window. Nobody's going to catch you. You can we use the um, pet bottles and put in the gutter. Nothing will happen. But they have you that will clean it. You know? So what exactly is this law they are breaking? It's a legal state. Environmental Management Law 2017. The law is very explicit. On our part as a government, I think we also have to ramp up our advocacy. But that is not to allow people to take a run at the law. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse at all. But if I've been trashing something for years there, nobody stopped me. Suddenly, now we call the money and shut down my building. And I'll be wondering, I went, who, who, what I exactly? Want to, I, I want to do you shut down like that. I'll serve you a notice to abate the nuisance. Mm. Was that done? Yeah. For all these markets, they were served notices. Within 48 hours, I beat the nuisance. But you see, over the years, like you said, if you are used to bad behavior, you believe wow. you can do it and get away with it. It takes a while. But we say to ourselves, not just the environment. We are, those in physical planning are doing the same. Those in transport are going to do the same. Yeah. Those in um, waterfront are going to do the same. All public-facing ministries, let us stand up to our task. Mm. I'll, tell, I'll give you an example of how people bad, are get, you are badly behave and getting away with it. For about 12, 15 years, VGC was flooding, Victoria Garden City, well planned by the lagoon, getting so badly flooded. And through the years, they've been saying, this is just not acceptable. But for one or two reasons, nobody was able to address the issue the way it should be addressed. So two weeks ago, we got a letter from the association. And... I said, let us go impromptu, impromptu visits. We were going to a quarter after a quarter. I said, okay, guys, let us go out and let's see what's at VGC. When we got there, this is, a, this is a canal. This is a canal, about eight meters. And three houses mm. chose to block the canal path. <coughs> Sorry, Mariah. They chose to block it mm. deliberately. And they extended their property beyond the canal, mm -hmm. wow. yes, beyond the buffer zone. And the whole estate for about 12, 15 years has been flooded. Has been flooded. Because of those three houses. Those three houses. Mm. On getting there, mm. I entered, I saw it, and I said to the permanent secretaries, this is not rocket science. Mm. Let us remove the houses. the houses. Let us remove, I'm not going to demolish your house. My own is, I will remove what is blocking my drainage. I However, I, no. It's your house. Sir. However, <laughs> where I remove it is the law. Mm. I will abate it. I will just remove the nuisance. It's a nuisance. And what, I, what we did was, that was a Friday. By Sunday, we had cleared it. We had cleared that drainage to the, to the lagoon. And we solved a problem of 15 years. Mm. But then Nigerians will ask, who gave What's those three people license the permission to, to build there? To build. And we pretend like they built and we did not it's see. Exactly. One government. of them said he had a an approval. And I asked him a very logical question. To start with, I have a legal background. I'm a lawyer. I practice law. I asked, can you put something or nothing? Can, can illegality beget legality for you? He said, total no. He 
illegality can never be get, it can never vest you a title. It's not going to happen. Okay. At worst, you'll still be branching that document. But what's the worth of that document? It's worthless. And we solved the problem. No, you have not answered the question. On. You have not answered the question. Who gave, who the, who license? gave him the license? Yeah. Oh, it, is that person going to be penalized? No, if I were the yeah. person that said, I blocked, I have approval, yeah. you write the governor. Let him, let him investigate instead of a PMB. Okay. It's a system. I can't go into that. That is not within my, okay. my, my powers. But if you are so convinced that you had a title, a title that will make you block a drainage, then forward it to the governor. And I know the governor. Follow it up. And follow it up. They will, set, they will investigate. Instead of a PMB, if people have connived somewhere, they will do that to you. Mm. But what I found out most times, mm. they don't usually have approval. Oh. We went to Ikota. Ikota was a very touchy one. Touchy because you see properties coming down for the sake of public good. Mm. It's touchy because we are all humans. Mm. Emotions were very high. But nobody told them the truth. Those that knew the truth, they knew why we came. Pre COVID, we showed the drone shot to everybody. It was green, wetland, everything. The canal part had been, the channel had been there for about 20 years. So they all met it there. So by 2020, before COVID, they had meetings. Ah, you can't build on this part. They all knew. Those that are built, kindly find a way to abate it. Remove it and let us quickly fix this thing. Then COVID happened, but they had to run for safety. You won't believe it. They continued. They now narrowed down the canal from about 10 to like 2 meters. Whoa. So 12 villages are now being flooded regularly. Hmm. So those 12 villages now wrote to the governor and they wrote to my office. We got there. We met with them. They didn't argue. And we said, we have to create this canal path to the Ikota, um, Ikota River. And in creating it, whatever had sitting on that canal path, they actually built on the canal path. Wow. They didn't argue. They now said, okay. Ah, yeah. It just tells you how we be. It's a brazen attitude for most of us. And we said, okay, remove it. I didn't demolish the houses. I had to remove, and I was, yeah, as I was, you know, but, but I was, demolish is obstruction. Yeah, it's demolish, he's no, just saying, he's just using. I had to remove those obstructions. Uh, the, Mike, let me pause. is different yeah. from Ajao Estate. Is it Ajao Estate? Right? Ajao Estate, I, I, I don't know about that. It's not to do with okay, um, didn't demolish that's an NCA. Let me take this call from Kelechi. Mm. Kelechi from Shasha, thanks for calling Kelechi. You are live, go ahead, please. Yes, go ahead. I am happy you are discussing this matter. Please, I want to give uh, give a complaint to the Honorable Commissioner. Can you hear me? Very clearly. Go ahead, please. Okay, please, uh, Honorable Commissioner. I'm happy you are here on this on this program. See, we are talking about environmental pollution. Please, I want to get draw your attention to the market at uh, Ileko, not Ileko, I mean uh, Katangwa. Please, that place, that place is not. That place is worse than environmental pollution mm. or the nuisance to talk about. That, that place was demolished about five years ago. So all the city toilets were in there. In fact, 80% of the land, the space in that, in, in that market, is not, they use it for at, at some time. Now, sheep, people, they use there. The people are taking up on top of, of, of sheep. That place is something else. In fact, eh, if you go there, you ask yourself, please, are human beings, eh? are, 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 these, are these people human beings? They are, it has been like that over five years. This is the first time I'm complaining about this matter on this, uh, on, uh, on, uh, right. on this program. Okay. Thank you very much. The regular yeah, color. Uh, Kelechi, okay. thank you very much. We shut down Aleppo. We shut down Aleppo for about two, three weeks. Because we saw it. I went there myself. And I saw the level of sanitary degradation. And I said to them, we can't, you, can't do, you can't market here. You can't do business here. And we gave them the checklist, standard checklist of what you have to do to meet up the requirements to run your business. And they did. However, on our own part, we said to Loma, your regular visitation, you must increase. Hmm. We've also unleashed the health officers. You used to call them Wole Wole. <laughs> they have about 600 sitting there in the ministry. I said, you, have, you don't have to sit down here. Go out there. Go and see what's, out, what's happening out there. Compliment the work of Loma. Hmm. And they are doing that fully. So, so we shut them down, mm. but we can't shut them down perpetually if they've met the requirements, requirements. To, to reopen. Mm. 
Okay, so um, there are a few things that concern um, many Nigerians. It is that when government is inefficient in holding, um, in maintaining law and order for a period of time, the citizens have to bear the brunt, and we don't we don't penalize or punish or publicly um, call out the people within the government who haven't done their job. So if a building goes up completely in Lagos, there are people who are meant to, from Lapska, are meant to supervise and check that building on a regular basis. Why did they let a building go up on, on the, the water, on, on the canal, and they, didn't, and they didn't pull it down? And they oh, get yeah. away scot-free. They are still earning salary. They are getting promotion. While the investors, the person who buys the building, is now having to bear the brunt of how to call the real estate company to re get a refund. This is something that we've seen online. And the question is, why are we not holding the government um, side accountable for what they've done in how they are culpable in supporting this infraction? Now, in fairness to you, in fairness, in fairness to um, the citizens, and in fairness to the Ministry of Fiscal Planning, the Commissioner for Fiscal Planning and his essay are all out there. After we went to a quarter, they also went to a quarter and they asked them, bring your building plan approval. As I speak to you, none of them. None of them, if they have, they will have brandished it online. None of them had a building plan approval. Does it make it right? No. Now, on our own part, I have said it. If you have a genuine case, mm. and you believe somebody in government, mm. in the civil service, or even outside it, connived somewhere to get, you get, to get involved in all this, do a detailed petition, attach a proof, and send it to Mr. Governor. He will treat it. Mm. Okay, still we don't answer the question, sir. No, that's only what they can do with them. No, what we, are, what, what we have not answered is there are people whose job is to supervise this area. That's right. Their job is to do checks in addition, all around. Even the local and government, their job to supervise. So why can't the building be going no, up your local government? Local government is not involved. No, but it's no. under fiscal planning and no, um, building let, commission. Let me, that's a um, Laska. La, La, Laska. Their own job is to supervise, and they have people that supervise. They will put seal. So somehow somebody supervised that area, and that yet is, the yeah. building finished. Yeah. That person's name should have been put out. Let me, let that me, person should have been penalized. Let me pause you for a second. Let me. It's, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. I have to take this call from Dubai. Then you answer that question. Good morning, uh, Prophet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're, you're alive. Go ahead. You're live now. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. God bless you. Yes, sir. I'd like to have your conversation with uh, environmental yes. for Yes. Uh, I thank you very much. God bless you. God will continue to strengthen you and to protect you more. You know, when our people don't understand, they always blame the government. Especially when God shoots somebody that is, is able to do the work. They will put effort to discourage that person to bring the person down. You are working, please, keep it up. We go outside, we live in abroad, we saw it. And when you go back home, people go back home and start complaining, blaming the government, and like the one spoiling the thing. You see, the God, please, I want to advise. When they uh, put out the gutter, or the those women are used to sweep the, uh, the road, they should pass it immediately. I live somewhere in Lekki, um, Sabota, those times. You can see the center of the road. The sand is already like another over every. Instead of to remove it, they put it there. So they are spoiling the work of the government, please. Okay. God Thank, bless you. You. Thank you very much, Prophet. Thank you. I was just going to ask you the. So there was a question Topo asked. Uh, he, he said they would, they would, they would notice. notice the people mm, that. Okay, yes. right, mm. go ahead. Uh, um, what are the requirements of these markets? What exactly do they have to do to stay open or not to be shut? Now, you must trade in a very clean environment. Mm. Your waste must be kept properly at a point where Loma or the PSP operatives can pick them up. For all the markets involved, they were not doing that. In fact, some of them, like um, Kelechi said, you can't even go in there and tell me you're going to buy something you want to go and eat. And it was not going to be rocket science to, to, to take to those decisions. Loma gave the checklist. Meet this checklist. And going forward, your waste management must be on this trajectory, or else we'll come again. Okay. Okay, sir. Let me go on a break.
And we'll come back. There's so many issues. Recycling is there and so many things. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guests with us. I was going to touch on the issue of this one of your sister agencies clamping everybody's car in front of business. I know that's probably not under your purview, but you probably have an idea. Yeah. It's part of what's going on because Nigerians are also complaining that me, I generally went to a business to go and uh, to park my car and I entered, I came out and then I got it clamped. Is that even legal at all? And secondly, you've been shutting down some really, really big popular stores in Lekki and people are thinking, yeah, we're hunting them, but let's take two different topics. Let's start with the the clamping down of the cars in front of the businesses. What's that about? Now, there's a law that set up that agency. And that law is meant to push back on touting where area boys would just come around, park vehicles. Non-state actors controlling that, okay. um, that side of um, government business. Now, interestingly, on Saturday, I got a message, a video of somewhere in Sule. So I forwarded to her, Ms. Sadila, and she sent me details. I was asking, I said, how about the invoicing? How do you serve notices? And apparently, they serve all of them notices. They even ask them to pay instrumentally. That you don't have to pay once for this, for this, um, for this service or this agency. You can pay monthly. And then they will serve you notices over time. But you see, Morayo, in truth, our people just don't believe things should work the right way. Non-state actors conniving with people over the years had entrenched their own interest over state and the general interest of other people. And we can't continue on that trajectory. So it gets to a point where we have to say enough. And when it's enough, let us stop enough it. Enough is enough. And reverse that unusual course. OK. Now to the second one. Mm. And that's about. Um, the, I mean, some really, really interesting, nice buildings in Lekki, Admiralty, shop. big shop things like Olaya, you know, places that you go to eat correct food. Olaya. Why are you shutting them down? Now, like this? What did two, Olaya do? Two nights ago. I was the one, I usually drive around myself. That's the only way I can assess yeah. how bad things are. So I was with, I, was, I attended a tribute for a friend of mine. So I left VI. I was a bit low, I was a bit sober. Yeah. So I had to go and see two of my friends. And when I got there, they told me that we thought you people shut down Kingfisher. They are open now. I said, they are open, okay. Okay, no problem. I didn't even tell him I was going to go out. So I went upstairs, I picked my car, and I drove. As I was driving, there was a noise I was hearing. I was trailing that noise. So it was on, coming from Falao Sibu. I went down Falao Sibu myself. And I saw the noise, cars blocked everywhere. Mm. And I parked. I said, ah, call me the manager of this place. And the guy came down. He said, they're just opening. And I said, look at the time. It's past 11. People are going to work tomorrow yes. morning. Put yourself in their shoes. Even if you tell me for Laos Sibo is a mixed use, how about those things behind for Laos Sibo? Kindly shut it down now. And I waited for 20 minutes. He didn't do it. Mm. And I recorded the video and I left. Mm. So on my way out, we had shot virtually all those bars on for Laos Sibo for the same infraction two, three days before. So I drove past. At the end of for Laos, at the end of Wale Lateju, to Admiralty, I saw this crowd. So they had opened Kingfisher. They had broken the seal. Wow. So I parked my car. I activated the camera I had on me, and I walked in there. I ordered water. I it sat down with you. them. They served me. And I came out. I called the GM. I said, where are you? Kindly call the CSO. Call the GMT. Said to the governor, said, I will deploy police. So by 12.35 or thereabout, we shot it and we got the two managers that broke our seal and we said to them, why would you do this? Hmm. Why are we talking about that? There's one big one again in Lekki. But we didn't know because the complainant just told me yesterday evening. The GM came and said, look, this place that was sealed. It's open. They had their regular strip gig. Hmm. And I said, they opened? Very good, no problem now. Go and reseal. And you'll see for a long time. 
Mm. And what are we doing? We're telling them it's not business as usual. Mm. If you think you are so big and I can wave it for you, then I can as well just wave it for everybody. Yeah. Mm. And then it becomes an obedient state. Life becomes nasty, British and short. Mm. But we can't allow that in Lagos. So yeah, go ahead. Let me ask, like yeah, let me um, you know talk about the waste that is being you know gathered from <coughs> all of the markets. Do we have enough space to keep them? Where exactly are these wastes going, going to? And are you working with any or collaborating with any organisation to see how you can convert this waste? We've seen uh, that waste can actually be used to um, turn into energy, and we are looking for other options aside from the greed that is always collapsing yes. every day in the country right now. So is there any plan to work with organizations that can work with that waste so it's not wasted? <laughs> wasted. Definitely, that's the future. Waste to wealth, waste to power is the future. And the mandate for Loma, La Sepa, Last Park now is you have to collaborate and work in sync, not in silos. Mm. And I'm glad to tell you that we are in high-level discussion with companies that have deployed this and successfully did the same in a neighboring country. Same population like Lagos, same environment, and they used to have the same bad attitude. Mm. So hopefully in the next three, four months, we should get to a point where we can say, we want to start separating the waste. Thank God Lafarge is taking up the waste and they are converting it for their own energy use. Mm. But we can still do much more mm. and we are on that path. Now do we have enough space? Uh, to put the waste where pollution so, up from. Uh, we don't. Mm. We've been so in, we've been, we, look. We've been in conversation with one or two neighboring states. We've been in conversation with Ogun for a long time. But it's not about taking the waste there. It's about converting the waste to proper use, and then shut down the ones that we've filled up here. The dump sites. The yeah. dump sites. Mm. Okay. And then relocate some of them. The solos work on them. And then we move it forward. Yeah. But the bottom line is we must find a way to convert our waste to wealth. Right. But that's the future. Mm. The, the future present. is now. Mm. The that present now. No, that future is now. They are even still do, they are doing that, but we have to ramp up capacity. Okay. All right. That's All right. what we're trying to do. Let me get Wike's question. Yeah, I was going to ask, these places that you've sealed, especially like the clubs, is there a way they can appeal or they have sealed them permanently because uh, they are in residential areas? Yeah, no, we can't seal them permanently. What we've done is, for some of them, it's noise pollution. If it's noise pollution, they'll tell you what to do and they'll give you the checklist. And then I've also said to them, you have to also include the safety commission. It's not enough that people come into the club to come and sit down and drink. How safe is that place? Is there an exit for fire mm. or anything? So they're also doing that checklist. Then... Lastly, the environmental hazard itself will tell them. If, for instance, I, I had an encounter with one of them three weeks ago, there was an inspection I was meant to do at the state house on a weekend. So I drove myself. And I, on my way out, I was on Awolowa Road for about one hour plus. They locked down the whole of Awolowa Road. I came down. I went to them and said, can you come and clear this nuisance? Let the road just be more terrible for all of us. And they were just doing their typical yanga. And I left. And the next day. They're always leaving. No, they will record it and leave. And leave. Fight now. You can't fight them now. I won't fight anybody. I left. The next day, we shot them. And we told them what to do. They met all the requirements. The one that was a bit dragging was the parking. And we said, go and get a proper valet arrangement within 30 days. And they spent 10 days from today, it's 10 days now. So in the next 20 days, we'll go back. But in fairness, they're comported. Okay. So there are different criteria. Right. Some were purpose built. The one in Lekki was built purposely for that purpose, for that business. Yes. However, you can't have your patrons coming there releasing gunshots. Mm gunshots regularly fighting and stuff. The neighbors said, this is their experience, and they came with proof. Okay. All right, let me go on so a break. We come up, we continue the conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
trying to stay with us. I'm told I have Kingsley from Mabule Ado holding. Good morning, Kingsley. Oh, I'm so sorry for keeping you. Um, people are asking, somebody sent a message here about noise pollution. It says um, they're always disturbing residents. Churches, always disturbing residents before, on Sundays especially. Midweek services, we have that noise pollution. Is that under your purview to also yeah. shut down noise pollution? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Um, just three days ago, La Sepa shut down about five, six churches at Bagada, around Bagada area, and they are ramping up. What we do for most of them, just like nightclubs, I tell them, you can't cherry pick. Churches, mosques, nightclubs, no. Apply the same law. And they will serve you notices. Mm. Abate your noise. They will engage you in advocacy. If you want to do this kind of thing, kindly deploy soundproof walls and stuff. But most of them believe we don't have to do it. But we're shutting down churches the same way we're shutting down nightclubs. Well, sing praise to the Lord. You gotta shout. No, you gotta no, scream. You don't have to shout to disturb please. your neighbor. Mm. You don't have to. Some put their speakers outside. Yeah, you have to. Please, sound everyone else is the speaker. <laughs> They'll buy another <laughs> one. Yeah, it's supposed to be inside. I wanted house. to ask. I want it. I want my no, senior. I want it in a good state. Tokwe, I have to hold you. I'm sorry. I have to be chuku of Ojo calling. So be chuku. Thanks for calling. Come to you, Tokwe. Go ahead. Good morning. Okay, Chuki, go ahead, please. Yes, you're live. Yeah, I, I really want to appreciate the Honorable Commissioner and the Lagos State Government for what they are doing. Okay? Yeah. And uh, my worry is about what the Commissioner said at the issue, at the instance of, at the instance of, of his response to the question you're asking. You know, you, you're asking, so he said, he made mention of the different areas, different areas he has gone to shut down. And there was something he said that I'm not too comfortable with. He said, if those areas, can, those markets can be shut down, why can't Alaba International Market and uh, Perfect be shut down? Are they better than those ones? To me, the commissioner, you're doing a great job. But for a layman they, who, under, who, who hears what you said, may not understand it from, may not understand it well, you know, they may think that you're withholding a particular state of the country. But for those who are learned, they will understand. That is number one. But number two, you showed us different areas in Lagos State. You showed us different areas in Lagos State that are messed up. Mm. Please, sir, can you show us similar areas in our in our international market and that are messed mm -hmm. up too? Plenty. Because from what I saw on the television, I didn't see any area that looks like our international market. That okay. looks like our international market. We understand what you're doing. Last two months, Lagos State government, government came and put out some buildings very close to Tana. We understand that fact. We understood it. It was okay. Yes. But from what I am seeing on the screen, I didn't see anywhere, any area that looks like Alaba International Market. Okay. Thank you very much, so, Chuku. So, where in Alaba exactly do you think was actually needed this information? Um, if I, if I, I, I thought they sent all these pictures to, okay. the, to the producer, we have pictures of Alaba. We have pictures of trade fair. We won't go into a place without having proof. Okay. Mm. Now, even when we serve them in 48 hours notice, if they had even abated those nuisances, we wouldn't meet them there as a day. We're shutting them down. We shut the trade fair on Sunday afternoon. Alaba was midnight to morning of Monday. So they had enough time to abate the nuisance. Right. But we do respect. I understand what Kichu was saying. But my own point is... What were the nuisances? Death. Death. Sanitary conditions. <laughs> very, very, very poor. Now, what he said with respect to what I mentioned, I'm, not, I, I'm just saying to you that I don't see ethnicity, I don't see tribe. I see law and I see the enforcement of the law. If there are infractions that we need to correct, irrespective of who you are, the, the status of justice is blind. I will enforce it. So I'm just drawing a parallel to say to you that if we could have shut down Oyibo, and we did, Ale Abiyagba, we did, my 12, my 12 oh, food market, we did. Oh, what do you mean? We did. Oh, uh, tell your show, we did. Then yeah. why? Or even Ladikpo, we did. And when they complied, we opened. So we should not elevate 
Alaba and Trade Fair above the others. Okay. Or yeah, else we are creating super traders. Computer we have a lot of questions. Stop yeah, we did. We, we showed our computer link. And, and, and Alaba and Trade Fair has Yoruba people there too. I used to do makeup and I was buying makeup from people that, their perfume shop there that is owned by a Yoruba person, Kudi Cosmetics is owned by Yoruba people, and they do business in these places. It's not a, an Igbo alone market, even yeah. though they might be in the majority. Yeah. Let's not make this thing about ethnicity. Hi, um, I wanted to ask you about when Loma fails. And then we have gathered our debts waiting for Loma to come. Loma did not come. It's not our fault that Loma did not come and carry the debt, but you shut us down because Loma did not come. Why are we not penalizing Loma as well? Why are the market owners bearing the brunt for the fact that their environment is dirty and Loma did not come and pick it up? Thank, thank you very much. That's the purpose of the notices we served. Mm. If it was the fault of the PSP operators, mm. then you escalate and say, look, you can't serve me a notice. I've been up to date. However, this and this person no. operating as a PSP on this corridor <clears throat> failed to show up. I'll give you an example. Somewhere around Remiolo, we did lucky one. Four weeks ago, I joined the program for the residents via Zoom. And um, they mentioned that they've been dumping refuse there, nobody comes. So I spoke to the MD of Loma the next day. I said, ah, MD, can you go and investigate what happened there? Lo oh, and behold, when he got there, he found out. For years, they stopped paying the PSP operator. Oh. And the person stopped. But we said, okay, just cut away the debts. Clean it up. Then we can now regularize and move it forward. If the PSP operator had done the right thing, all mm. I ought to have done was serve them notices after cutting away the debt. Mm. And then the law protects you by asking them to, to pay. pay. Let's talk, because of time, let's talk about the Lucio for a second. Because the dump site, I mean, is right in front of us here. The community there have been complaining about yeah. the smell. They told us at some point they were going to clear Lucio so What's the plan for Lucio so we are, going to, we are going to decommission the location at the right time. The committee, the we have to decommission it. Sir, I feel like you should pay compensation to the people because my church has buildings right behind Olusiosun and I knew the way it was five, ten years ago where we could go to the back and the children could play and now we can't. My children's school is also very close to Olusiosun and the stench gets to that place. So Olusiosu and Igondo. And we're not talking yeah. about paying Igondo compensation. Dumps, yes. because what, the commission Compensations to the city. So before you go to compensation, just know it's Olusosu and Igondo, because why the Nima um, is mentioning the Igondo dub site also. Yeah. But why before you answer that question, I want to ask, did the citizens come and meet Olusosu or did Olusosu go there to Good meet question. The Olusosu was growing and growing. No, no and growing. you have to ask. Because I uh, when they shot some nightclubs the other day, yes. Uh, somebody tweeted to my brother, ah, what of shrine? Well, shrine is an industrial area. Yes. Mm. If there's any residents. You, the they came to meet us yes. there. We got there legally so first. That's, that's that question. So, okay, that's now, I quite understand the sentiment. However, <clears throat> if you noticed, Olusosu has been here for a long time. Most of the buildings around here came to meet Olusosu really and truly. Mm. Sir. Now I'm coming on one side. So on our part, is it the right way to keep a dump site? I'll tell you no. The PSP operators themselves are not disciplined enough. But... The final solution is to decommission when we have the right equipment. That's why I, I spoke about the uh, uh, collaboration we're doing with somebody from the neighboring state. Separate the waste properly, convert the waste, and then move it forward. Once we do that, we won't get to soon before we get our problem solved. And then we're also trying to get a proper site in a neighboring state. It's an ongoing conversation. Okay. So for compensation, it's not that I know there. If you have a genuine claim, you can go in and make your claim. Because some of these people are illiterate. There's, there's a particular it's government. place that used to be used by seven of Let me take this call. Now, let me, let me, so before you take the call, now, let me, you know, you know before the African shrine, there used to be a shrine at Purple. Mm. Growing up, that was where we, most of us go, weekends. That was at the heart of residential area. Mm. You can't compare that shrine to the new African shrine. It's a purely industrial area. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Okay, sir. The shrine is not, is not against the law. No, no, no. The shrine is fine. There's no reason. Yay! I had a call. Magnetic button. I think we lost it for me. Sorry about, sorry about that. Let me come to you, BC. Uh, we're still, still talking. But now, my worry, while you're thinking of your question. I've got to my question. Oh, very good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with all these um, shutting down markets, you know, closing businesses, uh, what sort of backlash have you gotten from Nigerians and how are you protecting yourself? It's very important. Yes, yeah, even your staff go yeah, hard. Yeah, the staff was, are getting there beaten. There were some that got yeah. beaten.
Whoever touches a government official because of this official assignment has committed a crime against the state. So and we are going to enforce that. Enforcing is about sending a very strong signal also. Now you can't touch a government official doing his or her job. It's a no-no. For me, protection is from God. If you like, wear the old armor on your body. But this is Nigeria now. Somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody will just, call, just get caught by Abuja. Ah, that your, that your guy. That's open the markets to Please, tomorrow. Please, rubbish, open it. That's Nigeria. Even if your governor in is your fairness, president. In fairness, no, in fairness, Morayo, Mr. Governor, Mr. Deputy Governor, and the right honorable speaker of the house, had never, had never, ever, I repeat, never, ever gotten involved on this assignment. They had never even said... It's the work they sent you to do. To no? do, and then they believe... In my judgment, in judgment of my special advisor on environment, the civil service structure, I have just, I have two pump checks. So the four of us cannot sleep and be wrong, putting our head on the same. Mm. So it's a balanced thing. Okay, let me take a call. Frank from Ojo, thanks for calling. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, you're live. Yeah, I'm listening on the, on the following program and situation. We are just going on that level. I can hear you. Saying that. I want to hear you, no Frank. And I really wanted to call for more job. Um, so people are asked, uh, someone asked on social media, they want to know the channels to report environmental infractions. Exactly. Said that sometimes it seems reports only happen when they, people have personal, personal relationships. relationships. Yes. But is there a portal where private citizens can report? Yes, Ministry of Environment has got that from um, and those on social media. So yeah, they can send a DM. Yes. Ministry of Environment. Yes, and okay. you see, for me also as a public servant, Take off my number. It's everywhere. Send a message, but be specific about the location. Mm. So we know what you're talking about. Then we can now escalate. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, let me, the, um, my worry, one of my worries is that we, I think somebody talked about sustainability earlier. Yes. Um, people are, there's influx of Nigerians coming into Lagos every single day. So you sensitize this group in maybe one community. Don't this, don't do this, don't do that. And they clear the drainages. And a whole bunch of people in the next few months, a whole bunch of new people come there, they've, they've relocated the jackpot to a different country, new guys are there, and then how do you maintain right. sensitization? Culture is, is contagious. Mm. Yes, they will get the message. They will get the message. Mm. You're going to Rwanda, the moment you uh, about to land, they'll tell you, you can't come in with plastic. At all? At all. We'll, we'll find come you. Come from anywhere. Singapore, you can't chew a gum. Yes. Yes, so. <laughs> Don't reach. Yeah. You can't. So, those are things that we need to imbibe. It's tough to change culture, bad culture. But is, is it doable? I'll tell you, capital, yes. And we're on that trajectory. But sir, it's, it requires consistency. Um, have a call. Stop where I'm working. Today, like, wait, today, two of you, calm down. Have a call. Plantain chips. Yemi, I said Yemi. Yes, I'm checking. Yemi from Magodo, thanks for calling. You're live, Femi. Thank you. Who's my husband, child? Okay, go ahead. I'm alive. Cool. Of course, you're alive. Go ahead, you're alive. Okay, thank you very much. I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I just want to make a response or contribution to what one of the panelists showed with the observation she made earlier on, the one sitting close to Kiki, that uh, in, the, in the building of the, in, while building those houses, the houses that have been demolished. Yeah, thank you, uh, well, but this is the first time caller. Uh, I'm so sorry, he's listening to the TV. the TV. Go ahead, Tokwe. So I was going to talk about um, the fact that the policy being followed through consistently. We've had laws, and what happens is the government change. When the government changes, the new government isn't really pushing through, and people will realize that, okay, when I did this, nobody is holding me accountable, then it becomes the yes, new culture is. again. So how do we ensure that we don't, you, the next commissioner doesn't have to go through the stress you are going through now, that there's a sustained um, implementation process all through? System, not strong men, put in place very strong, resilient system. Oh. And that's what we want to put in place. Look, I'm just an individual, but I have behind me an establishment called Ministry of Environment and Water Resources. Mm. So that is not just about Tokumbo. I'm just by... Chance, by fate, the head of the place. You mean, did you? No, no chance. by chance. chance. Why chance. go? Sixty-two years old. <laughs> so, so I had uh, chance now. No chance. So, um, so for me, it's about putting in place very strong systems. Yeah. And um, sustaining them. 
I won't throw anybody under the bus. Mm. It's also about your approach, the conviction of whoever is on that driving yes, seat. Yes, yeah. The governor, the deputy governor, the whole House of Assembly in Lagos State made up their mind that we can't go on this trajectory anymore. And I'm glad they said to me, go do the work. Okay. Rescue right. Lagos from becoming a hell. Fantastic. And that's right. what we're doing. You see, yes. you see. So there was an allegation <laughs> of a 40 million bribe recently when the Ladipo market was shot. Can you clarify for <laughs> us get, get, get what exactly happened? You said they don't really um, I heard it. When I heard it, I, I called them for a meeting. And I said to them, whoever discussed money with you, can you just mention the person in public here? And they denied. And the next day, they went to make a press release. And they, nothing like that ever happened. Yeah. Without being immodest, without, and I repeat, without being immodest, it's not everybody that is bribable. Yeah. It's not every Nigerian that is bribable. I am not bribable. There's no amount of money you can Amen. give me that will change whatever I believe I have to do. It's about public good for me. Mm. So nothing of such ever happened. And I can say it before the whole world. If anybody had ever given me a bribe, let him flag it. Come forward. Let him flag it. Yes. yes. So I just wanted to ask about, because part of clearing is, is the street traders, which has become part of Lagos. Uh, uh, ah. My very own Mariah loves to buy plantations. God bless so. you, working with this question. <laughs> you know. So are we going to maintain the street Let traders? me add to that question. Let me help you, Waike. You <laughs> see, this is Nigeria. And we love Nigeria because of the difference, what differentiates us from the world, mm -hmm. is that on the traffic, I mean in traffic, I can, I, can, I can paint my house, mm -hmm. I can buy pepe, you can I cook. can buy, I can cook, I can you buy, can children, decorate I can buy my children's toys, I can buy books, I can <laughs> buy, plant, I can buy everything. <laughs> that is the most, Symbol, this was symbolic traits of being in Lagos. Really? And you can't, and you can't get in the world. We travel to America, you, you miss it. You see that, yeah. You miss it. So why would Ministry of Environment you miss chaos. start shutting down people who are selling plantations for us on the road? Please, oh, don't do that for us. I beg, I beg with you. You see, <clears throat> that, that we enjoy that chaos. Mm. Doesn't make it right. Mm. Who said it's chaos? Who defined it as chaos? Ah, when you nearly run down, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's chaos. Now, what we're doing is telling them there are stores. Mm. Move to those stores provided by local governments. All those guys on the road. They don't go there. So they don't go there. Ah. Interestingly, you ought to know better, Mariah, that the person patronizing them and the seller are both culpable. Yeah. They guilty. are both culpable. Yes, you catch two. For the past three years, catch catching catch the sellers, catch the, the buyers. <laughs> the buyers. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Please. Someone was accusing Mariah of not speaking up for Agbogbo that you, 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 you that you are from Lagos Island now. You're Lagos Island as a Lagos Island babe Meaning that, that you are, yeah. that you, you should be fighting for Selling your food? village. What happened to them? <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that it's all over, it's all markets, you know. No, no, but we, we were at Saleko two weeks, two Sundays ago, the governor. Okay. We're all there. We saw the state of um, Jankara. We saw the state of Bombata. Rohingya and those neighboring streets. And we said to them, this is not the path to go. And they've agreed. We've mm. put down the shanties. Mm. Now we have to wait for the rain to subside fully so we can now come in with Ministry of Works to reconstruct the road. We've, we've distilled virtually all the drains in Saleko, mm. all. It's really, really bad. We deployed 250 FANG men mm. for Saleko alone. Mm. Well, it's not sustainable. I wish supposed to be doing that. I'll tell you no. That's the role of tenement and local government. Mm -hmm. However, we can't wait for that to happen. We have an emergency. We have to fix it. And we are now engaging local governments across the state. That look, this is our mission, this is our vision. And we think you must, as a matter of necessity, key into this and let us collaborate together. Mm -hmm. You have no excuse to tell me that the tertiary drains are blocked in local governments. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not supposed to even be heard. Now, we're also deploying to sustain. We are deploying those wole wole men. Okay. We are straightening them up. We're going to recruit more. Put them in each of our wards. Let them be localized. They have no business here in Alausa. Okay. We're also recruiting. The government has said we have to recruit more CAI members. Mm. Enforcement. Straighten them. But most importantly, the advocacy yeah. must go top notch. We have to wrap up in like a few minutes, but I think the question I just asked in the head, like, who is next? Mm -hmm. Where is next? Where you, what, I mean, what, what are the next few things we should expect? Because people are trying to 
you know, they don't want your wahala. So tell us where you are, where you are going, so that we can begin to plan and prepare. So you don't come and shut us down. And, and why you are at it? Because people are really against when you raided um, the that your area. Yes, the, Shangisha. The, the, uh, and they, they were. Wasn't they them. paid me? Was them? A guy was a guy. Oh. Was a guy was the was the orchestrator of it. Yes. And they took they took all the tomato. Oh uh, my son, they and the yams. Carrying the tomato it. very carefully yeah, as they were yeah, going to cook. Yeah, Kafila removed her. They donated snail. it. They put a video. Oh. Uh, yes, yeah, Kafila that sells snail. They removed her snail. Sunday that sells yam to me, they carried everything. Then, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? What's that she, name? <laughs> that she that sells tomato and everything, they carried everything. I was like, hey, hey, all of them disappeared. It's only Rashid that's come back. Rashid now, I think we went to go and pay because on the other side. Shop. So, <laughs> the other side. So, I see Rashid, only Rashid on oh, the yeah, other side. rented a shop. I think I rented a shop. That is the way Others to go. have just been clear. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah, cafe, yeah. No, you the see, Mario, like, Mario, Mario we, can't, we can't reward bad behavior. We can't. Okay. Let us tell ourselves. Yeah. No, we have to determine what, how we want to. We want this environment and this state. Player. Where is next? We have to, we have to, one minute. Yeah, I want the girls to be nice and neat. And beautiful. Yes. I where, where, where are you? Where is the where, where are you hurricane? Going? Yes. I'm not going to have to demolish. Where is hurricane? No. We have going. Um, a lot of things are happening simultaneously. Okay. Last park, uh, parks and gardens are deploying resources okay. to take up the greens, the areas that have empty hands. We've freed up from um, nuisances. Mm. And then La Sepa is ramping up capacity to reduce noise pollution and engage our environment to be friendly. Loma is threatening up. Okay. And then we are going to revamp Loma in a way that it should be different. Okay. Just tweak one or two things. But as per getting our drainages up and running with water without being blocked, we're not going to tell you where we're going. But I know I'm meeting those from Ikoi today. Mm. Okay. Because we've served them notices. The state house is perpetually flooded because some big men and not so big men had blocked the, the channel parts. Okay. And then okay. we are going to Agbogi sometime next week. Okay. We show them the drone and then we move. For me, it's about let us take ownership. Right. Let us be positive with our environment. Let us also say to ourselves, we have no other place mm. to live a decent life. Okay, we have to wrap up. You see those lucky houses, eh? I can close my. But for you to demolish your house, you must have backbone. <laughs> you must have liver. Must you must have very liver. Very your liver, liver must. must if it's lucky, you are not a real. Because you can't. I'm not a real. All right, that's all we can take on today. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.